I made the mistake of posting on Twitter how I used an enum in my recent project, and I was immediately told I should never do that. To get some perspective as to why enums are bad, I watched this video from Matt Pocock. And while I agree with most of what he's saying, I also have a little different take on some of his points. Let's talk about it. So first off, Matt Pocock is a better TypeScript developer than I will ever be. But I do have some opinions on what he said. So the reason this all started for me is I'm working on this project called dealsfordevs.com. It's actually available if you want to sign up now for the newsletter where we'll send out deals in these different categories, ebooks, courses, tools, etc. And so what I defined is an enum in TypeScript to define all the different types of categories that we would have. Now, actually, we're going to get rid of this and pull this information from a database, which I think is more appropriate. But by doing this, we know if we're going to reference a given category, it can only be one of these different options. I love the IntelliSense that comes with that as well. So if we do category and then dot, we get an enum list here of all the different values that we can use. So I posted about how this is useful for me, and people sent me this video by Matt Pocock. So one of the first things that he mentioned is he talks about uh, basically if TypeScript had the ability to do it again, they would not do enums, and you can hear that now. But I saw an interview with Anders recently, and he said that if they had a green field, they probably wouldn't make that mistake again. So that's interesting. When you talk about somebody that's involved in actually creating the language or like the spec TypeScript on top of JavaScript, for them to say, like, I wouldn't go back and add this, that's interesting, and it's worth really getting into. But then we get into, like, what are the specific points that make it not such a good option? So the first one was actually the biggest point for me, and it's one that I didn't know. I'm curious if you knew this as we get to it, but here's how Matt explains it, and then we'll talk about that in a second. This means that if you do object.values on a log level, you're going to end up with zero debug, one warning, two error, which if you're treating this like an object is totally not what you expect. So basically what this is saying is the JavaScript that gets created from the TypeScript, if you just define an enum like this, it adds in uh, the indices of the keys as keys as well, which is 100% not what you would expect. So I've got a little example here in a TypeScript scratch pad using Quokka, and I want to show you what this looks like. If I just define an enum without values associated with the keys, basically this gives like automatic values that are the same as the key. And there is this really interesting thing where if we were to log this, we're going to see that we get the actual keys that include those numbers of 0 and 1. And that's absolutely not what we want. And if we look in my code, I actually do this in my code. So object.values, and then I map through those to display uh, categories in a dropdown menu. So I use the object.values, I uh, do that from the category enum, and then I map through them in React. So I was wondering, why did this not happen for me? Because I never saw these indexes being added. Well, it turns out if you then define an enum in TypeScript that also has the values defined, you don't get those additional index or indices listed as keys. So you just get kind of exactly what you want. So his point is that this takes a little bit of extra effort. It kind of defeats a little bit of the purpose because you're having to explicitly define this value, but it doesn't have those additional keys. So for me, after watching the entire video, and we'll talk about this more, the most compelling point for me of not using enums is by default, if you don't define the values for the given keys, you get those additional keys, which are the indices, and that's absolutely not what you want at all and could definitely cause you issues later on. Now, Matt goes on to talk about one additional issue that I actually feel the exact opposite on, and that is the ability to pass basically the value associated with an enum as an enum to a function. Let's see what he says. Debug. You can't call it with like a member of the enum that isn't expressed as the enum. So you can't just pass like debug here. It has to be log level dot debug. So what he's saying is we have a function definition where the the property or the parameter of level is defined to be the enum log level. And what worked at first was to pass in log level dot debug. And what he has a problem with is the ability or not having the ability to pass in the direct string here, which is equivalent to what that property is from the enum. Now, my issue with this is enums for me are used very intentionally to avoid passing hard-coded strings. So anytime we have hard-coded strings in our application, that can lead to potential issues where we mistype them, etc. Now, when his in his eventual solution that you'll see in a second, it actually does give you the TypeScript types around that. So if you did mistype it, it would catch it and let you know. But 
from my perspective, one of the big reasons we have enums is so that we aren't manually typing or hard coding strings. We're able to reference them as values associated specifically with an enum. So for this specific point, I actually disagree. I think this is a good thing that you can't send hard coded strings and have it also be accepted for an enum parameter. Now he then goes on to his next issue, which doesn't allow for you to pass in a value from an additional separate enum, even if those values are the same from one in the original enum. If that's confusing, here's what he says. If I create log level and log level two, even though the values are exactly the same, I can't assign log level two dot debug to this level here. Now he has an issue with this and I think I, I think this is exactly how it should be. So you have two different enums and those things are completely separate from each other. Now, even though the debug property associated with both of these enums, the value for it is the exact same. I don't think it should be treated exactly as if it is the other enum, which is in this case, log level one versus log level two. So this feels like something that should be intentional. And one of the reasons or benefits I think you get from this is if you have to refactor, and he talks about this in this case, and maybe you change the debug value here to something else that could mess up the code that he's written here. Cause even though these values match up to start log level, log level two, log level two, the debug property, if you were to change log level two, because it's a separate entity that would then mess up this code. And it's, it's not necessary for that because I think you should be required to pass in an enum value associated with that specific enum. So this is another point where he prefers the flexibility. I actually prefer the rigidity or however you want to phrase it, because I think this actually makes more sense to be restricted to specifically the type of enum that's defined as the property. Now, Matt then goes on to talk about his alternative. And I did learn something completely new that I didn't actually know before. So let's take a look at what his option is. And then we'll talk about that. Instead of using enums, and I've seen this all over the place in open source application code, is using a POJO, a plain old JavaScript object that's just got this as const annotation on it. Now, this is really interesting. Also, fun fact, the POJO idea, I actually haven't heard uh, plain old JavaScript object. I've heard that as plain old Java object much more. So it's interesting to hear POJO related to JavaScript. But the one thing I specifically didn't know in this is the definition or the use of as const. And so with const variables, if we do a const person equals name of James, because this thing is defined as a const, we can't assign a person to a new object. So that's going to throw an error. But what we could do is we can set the person.name property to another name and that's totally fine. So what as const allows it to do is make sure that this thing isn't, a, isn't able to be changed at all. So now we get this error. So it's actually a really useful uh, way to define an object to prevent you from being able to change those nested properties and make sure that it truly is a constant object that can't be changed at all. Now he then goes on to explain how he derives the types from this from that POJO, that plain old JavaScript object. There's a little bit of type magic here to extract the type out so we can use it. We're just extracting the object values. And then this log level ends up as debug or warning or error. So I have a little bit of issue with this and it's not because it's wrong. It's because Matt is so knowledgeable in TypeScript. I think it's easy to forget that those two lines of TypeScript for me, seven and nine, I have, I could never write that myself without help. I've never seen those structures in TypeScript. So this is a new thing for me. It's not something I'm incapable of learning. It's just something I've never used before. So one of the things I also factor in with exploring this alternative route to doing enums is the knowledge that comes with having the knowledge you have to have to be able to understand and also generate this TypeScript code. So Matt is way beyond me as a TypeScript developer and always will be. I'll never be as good at TypeScript as he is. But one additional perspective I bring is those are lines of TypeScript that I'm not familiar with and could be even more confusing, I think, for people that are relatively new to TypeScript. So I think that's one potential benefit to the other side of leveraging enums because of the fact that they're a little more simple to put together. Now, I do think, and I wanna reiterate, the number one downside to enums is that generation of those extra keys which relate to the indices of the values inside of the enum. And I think that is honestly pretty terrible, but if it's something that you know about and you're going to define your own values associated with the keys anyway, like I've done, you don't really have that issue. 
Now, Matt has one additional point that I wanna cover at the end, a benefit for this type of definition, but it's one that I've already addressed in my code using an enum anyway, so let's take a listen. So here I've got a mapping between the levels and a human readable version of that level. Instead of the log level being extracted from the values, it's now being extracted from the keys. So basically what he's saying is he has a mapping inside of this uh, object from the kind of the enum thing that you select the key and its value, which is the human readable version of this. And it's funny because I thought of this initially with my example. And if we go back to this, that's exactly why I defined this inside of my code this way, because I had the opportunity to define these keys as uppercase and then the values being lowercase. So I actually think what he's saying is a nice benefit, but it's also a benefit that's available to you inside of a regular enum anyway. So all of this to say, I think this is awesome information to have, whether or not you decide to use enums or go the route that Matt says that Matt has here, I think that's totally up to you. And even he addresses this in the, at the end of his video where he says he wouldn't flat out refuse a PR where someone uses an enum, but he might question whether it's actually necessary and whether this might be a better alternative. So it's up to you. What do you think based on that information? Would you use regular enums in TypeScript the way I have, or would you embrace this new POJO object with TypeScript types defined based on that like Matt has here? Let me know in the comments below which one you would prefer. Now, I wanna give an additional shout out to Matt who is absolutely amazing. He also has a full TypeScript course called Total TypeScript. If you wanna learn TypeScript, it's absolutely the way to go. So check in the description for a link. It's not an affiliate, it's just a way to support him for the amazing work that he's doing. So check it out, go subscribe, follow him, all the things, learn TypeScript from him because he's absolutely amazing. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in following that project that I'm working on called Deals for Devs, and you wanna get notified for the latest deals and courses, eBooks, et cetera, you can sign up for the newsletter at dealsfordevs.com. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.